badass motherfucking biker is what I am. <laughs> Ray Kemble out of Dimmick, Pennsylvania, United States. Ex-gas worker. Well, back in 2008, the industry came into Dimmick, Pennsylvania and started doing their gas drilling and fracking. And that's when the water well went bad at my house. And after a year, listening to DEP and everybody else with all our bullshit or lies, I decided to go work for the gas company to find out what the hell was really going on. So I started driving a water truck. So I started doing a pre-drill, you know, doing the concrete job, the pre-drills, fracking, after the fracking, everything else, I did it all with the water truck. Illegal dumping, cross contaminations of the trucks, you name it, we did it. So that's how I got involved in this, because I went, to my, first my property got contaminated, my water got contaminated, got tired of everybody lying to me. So I went to work for industry to find out what was going on. Cool. Um, and what was your initial experience once you started working in the industry? Uh, everything they say is a lie. If they say it's daytime, it's night. If it's night, it's day. Uh, you know, they, they, they'll spend hundreds of millions of dollars in commercials, man, trying to say how great it is, you know. You know, we want to shove this hose right up your ass, man, because it's going to be good for you. Well, it's not. Um, it's just the, the chemicals alone, I mean, you don't really understand the chemicals until you're actually on a site and seeing it be in, in the process. And the way I started finding out a lot of things, I get on a site, I'd ask the company man what was going on. He seen me sitting off the side smoking a cigar. He'd walk over and goes, hey, you got an excellent cigar? Sure. I give him a cigar and we start talking. You know, what's going on over there? You know, what are they doing over here? You know, what's in those drum, what's in all those drums over there? You know, there's 275 gallon drums there with no labels on, but they're all different colors. You know, what's in the drums over there? So, you know, I'd ask questions to the company man. He was just, yeah, he was just a dumb driver. He was just more than happy to turn around and tell you everything that was going on in the site. And then I started relaying the information to different people that were starting up groups and fighting. And when we started, the very beginning for the guy I was working for time at the very beginning, he wanted everything super, 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 super safe. I mean, if the speed limit was 30 miles an hour, you do 35 miles an hour, all right? You make sure the fittings are on tight, you make sure it's not dripping any water. I mean, he was really super, you know, on the safe side. After a few months, the really industry is pushing, okay? Well, now it's screw that shit, man. Just get it done. We don't care if it's leaking. We don't care if it's leaking off the truck. We don't care just, if, you, if you go off the side road somewhere and dump it, get back real quick, get in a load, do it. Uh, taking brine and flow back water, putting it in fresh water trucks, put a spray on the back and we spray the roads for dust control. You're just dumb asshole hillbilly. You don't know any better. It says fresh water on that truck. It's not. Well, we use hundreds and thousands and millions of gallons of water, you know, in, in the industry, you know, for drilling and fracking. You know, we need the fresh water. We've got to run fresh water in. And we need that to do the concrete for the initial concreting of the uh, hole. Okay, that's before we even drill to put the casing in. So you need water for that. Okay, so you're bringing in seven, eight trucks for that. Now you got to bring water in for drilling in the initial hole. Then they get the casing in and everything else, so forth, okay. But then we gotta bring water in for the drill rig because they need the water to drill, to mix up with the mud, to make the mud, and everything for drilling. Okay, so we'll run, oh God, you know, depending on how far they're drilling and everything else on it, you can, you know, you can run a couple hundred thousand gallons of water, you know, the drill, of the drilling of the hole. Now let's talk about all the millions of gallons that we'll use to frack it. So, I mean, this is all water that's being pulled out of creek beds, rivers, any contributory we can get in and get water out of, we do. Okay? So, this is literally water being taken out of the rivers, streams that feed other rivers and streams. Eventually, does run in the ocean. But different areas like up by us, they're realizing down by the Delaware River Basin and everything else, where the river level has dropped because we're pulling out so much water from up north and they've actually seen a, the river drop <clears throat> for the water usage. But now the water that we're taking out and using in the fracking process, you gotta stop thinking about it. This is water taken out of the water. This is the cycle of life, it's gone. That water's been removed from that cycle, okay? That water will never become rain, never become snow, 
that word is gone. You're never going to see it again. So again, you got massive droughts in areas, you know, global warming. Uh, yeah, you know, where you want to go with this? I mean, it's the whole, it's the whole picture. But I mean, yeah, you know, that is water, that is a large amount of water that's being removed from the cycle of life. I mean, like us now, we have to truck water in from another county and town. We have to truck the water in, so we have water at the house that we can sh that we can shower and do our laundry and wash our dishes. Can't drink it. Non-potable water. So now, besides that expense of the gasoline and everything else that we have to run the truck to get water to the houses and the water bill that we have to pay, we also now have to go out and buy bottled water to drink and cook with. It's a big expense. Yeah, you know, when you that we never did it before. Never had to go, I never went out and bought bottled water in my life, man. If I wanted a glass of water, I went over to the faucet, turned it on, got a glass of water. I want to make a pot of coffee. I walked over the faucet, turned the, filled my pot up, man, made a pot of coffee. I didn't have to go buy a gallon of water, man, so I could make a pot of coffee. Which is just, I remember back in the later part of the 70s, 80s when I was truck driving across the United States. People started, I started seeing these bottles of water. Like, who in the hell was going to buy a bottle of water, man? We want water, we just go to the tap and turn it on, we got a glass of water, you know, come on. I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was stupid. It was the most dumbest thing I ever saw in my life. Now look at it now, you walk into the store now and there's 90 different bottle, water bottle companies there. It's a multi-billion dollar business. I think, I think selling water is more, is a bigger business than it is than gas drilling. <laughs> and a better profit. If you set up a pad, the initial, and I'm, I'm gonna just use this as, so we keep it simple. You set up your pad here, you have 50 employees on this pad here. When you're done with this drill here, now you're gonna move the pad to the next site. So now you take that drill and the elbow, everybody there, and you go over here. So the 50 people that were here are now over here. And each time they move it, those people go with that pad, with the, with the drill company. So industry will turn around and go, well look, this month here, you know, they moved it twice. We just created 100 new jobs. No, you didn't. You moved the original 50 from here to here to here. You didn't create any new jobs, okay? You didn't move the original employees and you just keep adding it by 50. So if you move, so stop thinking about it. You move, that, you move that rig 50 times or 100 times in that month, times it by 50, that's what they're saying they got for employees. You don't, you have the original 50, all right? And they did it with us there. You go, look, this year we created over 110,000 jobs. No, you didn't. You move the original 50 around. The locals ain't got crap because you bring all your people in from out of, country, out of state and everywhere else to work the industry. So all the locals got kicked out because they would talk when they realized what was going on. They didn't like what they were seeing. They didn't like what we were doing. So of course they were speaking out or refused to work. They bring their people in from out of state or out of country, bring them in because they will do what they want. But when that happens, okay, um, she said it earlier in there when she was talking. It's the crime rate you're going to have when this all happens, okay? We're a country. I mean, I used to leave my, my I don't want to lock the door of the house. I used to leave the keys in my trucks and the cars and everything else, leave them in there. And go, I'd go away for a week. Keys would be in my trucks. i come back home and stuff be where it is. Now you better not leave a rake laying out in your front yard because if you leave a rake in your front yard, it'll be gone. All right? Uh, crime rate went up, sexual assaults went up, the rapes, um, violent crimes went up, DUIs went up. I mean, the police department in town, rule of thumb, industry, if it's a gas worker, DUI, do nothing. Take him down to the jail, sober him up. Once he's sober, give him his keys back, send him on down the road. Do not do anything. Rule of thumb, you don't mess with the gas industry because they're bringing all this money into us. You know, oh, well, you're a mayor. Well, here's $100,000 for your mayor, okay? Oh, well, gee, you know, you're one of the cops. Well, here's 100 grand for your department, you know? Fire departments, you know? Oh, here's $100,000. We'll buy you some new trucks. They buy the politicians. Why don't we talk about the leaking aspect of it? All right, we blow off at the compressor stations. We might do a blowdown on a, on a pipeline and stuff, so it'll get shut off at one at compressor station to another at compressor station. You got 10, 15 miles of pipeline there, and we'll open the valve up and let that methane run right in the air and bend it right straight off. And 
on a pipeline do a compression study. This happens two, three, four times a month, just in our area. I'm not even going in other states or anything else on this. I'm just ta I'm just talking about right there in Susquehanna County. Yeah, you got we're going we're drilling clear across the whole entire state. Okay, that's just Pennsylvania. Let's get in Oklahoma, Texas. You know, let's get up in Wyoming, the Dakotas. You know, you know, every pl any place you're going to do it. You're going to have the methane going off in the air. Well, why don't, why don't you just turn around and just shoot everybody, just drop a couple nukes down, just wipe everybody out now and just make it quicker. It, it, you know, really. This is not just a problem for Dimmick, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania or the United States. This is a worldwide problem, okay? Because what you put in the air here eventually gets to me over there. What we put in the air over there eventually gets over here. It's a closed loop planet, okay? So, I mean... So it, it's, you know, it's, it's a worldwide problem. This is not just you know, local problems or state or county or countries. I mean, it's a global problem. And everybody better get on board and realize that this is a serious problem for all of us. I mean, you know, like Pennsylvania. You know, our constitution in Pennsylvania states that we have the right to clean air and clean water for now and the future generations to come is what our constitution says. There ain't no water for future generations because it's all contaminated. So our constitution is not worth the paper it's written on. So, yeah. <laughs> the only one that's making any money out of this is government officials and industry. We the people, we're fucked.